Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Saturday, October 5th, 2024. Now, before we get into this broadcast, I do want to remind folks, if you have not donated yet to the American Red Cross to kind of help the victims of Hurricane Colleen, here is the QC code. If you want to scan that real quick, make a donation, and let's help the folks in need, everybody from the Carolinas all the way down to the Gulf Coast, down toward Florida. Uh, they're definitely going to need assistance, and we got another storm that we need to potentially watch for as well. So here's uh, what we're tracking here is we're going to be tracking not one, but two nice little cool shots here across the eastern portion of the United States over the next 10 days. The west looks like the heat is going to continue with above normal temperatures for most locations. And then we're talking once again about a potential for a Gulf of Mexico hurricane. Yeah, it looks like we got another one we're going to need to watch for as we head toward the middle of this week. Now, before we can get into all that, if you are, have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you like what you see with this report, please, as always, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm as we continue to try to grow the best channel possible for you guys out in the YouTube universe. All right, let's go ahead and take a look right now at our morning satellite imagery as we've got some clouds here across the south. You should see building sunshine here. This should be clearing off here a little bit. Got some morning rains up in the main. I'll show you here in just a second. Got another little storm system here that's kind of clipping the northern tier of the United States. It's going to be this little system that's going to bring in our initial cool shot here across the eastern portion of the United States. And then, of course, we're going to be watching this disturbance down here in the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico, which looks like may become our next main system. Now, here's our current surface map. We get to a little bit of cooler air here moving in across the Midwest and into the Northeast. Again, uh, this is really the cold front back here that's going to kind of really kind of cool things down here across the eastern portion of the United States. Most of the West, although not bad, is still running above normal for this time of year, and that will continue to be the trend out here over the next, uh, say, six to ten days and even beyond that. And I'll show you the climate outlook here in a second to illustrate that. Now, here is our morning rain here across Maine, just plain old-fashioned Steady rain. It's one of those rains in the morning where you just want to kind of lay in bed and wait for this to go on by. But definitely a wet start today across the central portions of Maine. But uh, this will be moving on out and we'll see things begin to improve by late this afternoon. Now, looking at our current watches and warnings, we do have a few pockets of fog out here across the eastern, across portions of Virginia, back toward Tennessee, parts of Kentucky and into uh, areas of Mississippi. Red flag warnings, very dry up here, very windy as well up here across the northern plains. And uh, still dealing with some heat for the interior sections out here in California as well. But uh, the red flag conditions, obviously, that uh, got to be careful with that. Might set up fires when you see those kind of conditions out there across portions of the United States. Now, our weather city of the day, speaking of some fog, got a little bit of fog out here. This is Richmond, Kentucky. Should be a beautiful day, though, here for Richmond later this afternoon. We'll see sunny skies and a high temperature this afternoon of 81 degrees. And hey, if you'd like to nominate your city as the weather city of the day, and you know of a good webcam in your area, perhaps on YouTube, some other source, go ahead and take that link. Go ahead and paste it down below. We'll consider it for a future broadcast. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center as we're going to be taking a look at uh, what they're looking for here for your Saturday, Sunday, and Monday as we go through the next uh, three days. We do have a little pocket of severe weather we're going to have to kind of watch here uh, for today. It doesn't look like it's going to be too bad, but definitely a, a small pocket to say the least. You can kind of see that here with that little bit of that yellow and green up here across Wisconsin, parts of Michigan right up through here. Just a general thunderstorm here right along the Gulf Coast, but uh, again, just a little pocket there across portions of Wisconsin. Now, not a tornado risk with this, but definitely a pocket of some hail, not out of the question there, across that yellow zone. That's where that site risk is at. And obviously, uh, that larger area, there's a little pocket there, marginal of the wind field being pretty high. That's wind gusts in excess of 55 miles per hour. So nothing too bad there for your day one outlook. Let's go ahead and check out Sunday. Let's check out day two. How's that looking? Well, we start to move that front off toward the east here a little bit. So you can see that the marginal risk there stretching from New York, stretching back toward West Virginia as that frontal system begins to move into the northeast. Again, that's going to be that system that's going to be bringing in that cooler temperatures here across the eastern uh, third of the United States. And then our day three outlook uh, looks like it's pretty much confined uh, down toward Florida for day three. Uh, not a big deal here uh, with uh, just a general thunderstorm threat there. Most of the country looking very quiet as we head toward your Monday uh, starting into the new work week. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the general outlook here. This is the three to seven day hazards outlook here. And yeah, we got some areas of concern here I do want to highlight. Obviously, you see in that, you know, we're talking about that cool pocket, you could definitely got the, the cooler weather here coming down. We've got the potential for some freeze in here 
uh, coming in. So that's something to watch. And then, of course, this has gotten a little bit bigger here. We're watching this area down here. That is for the flooding potential. That's with our tropical system. Looks like Wednesday looking like a possibility we may be dealing with a hurricane crossing Florida at that time. And then we're still dealing with some heat uh, down here across areas of the southwest and parts of California here in your three to seven day hazard outlook. Now, of course, we want to talk about the tropics. That is what continues to be the main story here for today as we've got Kirk and Leslie still spinning out there. Leslie's now a new Category 1 hurricane, and Kirk's weakened a bit, a little bit. It's back down to a Cat 3, but uh, peaked out as a Cat 4. And we're waiting on Milton. Probably going to get Milton here pretty soon here, uh, sometime maybe uh, maybe today and or tomorrow. We'll see how it works out as we're watching those systems out there. So we're only looking at a 70 to 90% chance we're going to get something down there in the Gulf of Mexico to watch. And then we got another system, even beyond that one, uh, we'll have to watch out that maybe Nadine uh, out in the Atlantic will watch. But the, right now, Kirk and Leslie, not a concern. They're going to stay out, out in the Atlantic, although Kirk is going to be kicking up a lot of major sea wave conditions, and uh, the East Coast is going to be dealing with that. And I'll show you a little map on that here in a second to kind of illustrate that. Now, here is the satellite imagery as what we're seeing out there right now. Again, we've got uh, Kirk out here finally start. It's peaked out. It peaked out at about 145 mile per hour winds as it's moving northward into the open Atlantic. Here is Leslie right behind it. It's going to follow a similar path as this one's going to kind of move up this way as well. Uh, and then we'll see what that next disturbance does. And then we're, of course, watching what's going to be happening out into the Bay of Campeche. We're looking at your uh, close up view right here. Again, a lot of explosive thunderstorms out there. Uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft will be heading out there here real soon to kind of check and see if we got that low level circulation development. And then we'll see what, what kind of system we're going to get. Uh, all I can tell you, as I said in the thumbnail here, is, you know, get ready now, okay? Especially if you're in Florida. I know parts of Florida are still playing cleanup from the last storm with Helene, and there looks like they got another one that's going to be coming right on its heels. So, again, get ready for this. We're still dealing with some very warm water temperatures out in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, where this is currently sitting, you're still seeing uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So we're talking 85, 86 degree water temperature uh, for this to kind of feed off of here in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, again, that's what these hurricanes feed off is those warm tropical waters. And right now there's a little bit of discrepancy in the global models as far as the track is concerned, okay? So we're gonna have to watch this one very, very closely because it can make a big difference. Again, the angle of attack of where this is coming in is coming from west east, not south to north like it was with Helene. So anything on the right side of that storm is, is the strongest. So when you look at the, the, the GAF models here on 92L, that's our, our area of disturbed weather, it's further north, it's just a little bit uh, south of Tampa. And then the other one is further south, uh, south right there. So it's, uh, again, the tracks differ and the strength intensity also differs a little bit. So we're going to have to really nail this down here in the days. Although I think we're a pretty good consensus that we're going to see at least, I think, a minimal hurricane here impacting that. But the potential for it to be stronger is definitely, definitely in the cards. Uh, looking at the uh, model intensity guidance here, again, taking some of the models, taking it up to a Category 2 hurricane. So we're not talking about Helene-level stuff, but at least a significant hurricane, perhaps getting up to 100-mile-per-hour winds potentially or a little higher uh, coming in there on the west coast of Florida. You know, I'm thinking maybe somewhere around the Naples area is where I'm thinking right now. Of course, that would put Tampa on the left side of the storm. And that means the winds be blown off. They don't have to deal with the storm surge. They're still trying to clean up the storm surge uh, from the last storm there along Tampa. So they definitely need it to stay to the south. So here again, what we're going to be looking at here, let me switch you over here to the model data here. As I'll switch over to that, we're going to look at the European data here. Okay, so we're looking at the European and we're going to be tracking this here. Now the European is not overly aggressive with the strength, but it does here form here through this weekend uh, that we're going to get a tropical storm. So that'll be Milton. Here as we go into Sunday, and it moves it off toward the east as it makes its way up toward the coast. So it looks like the pressure falls down to about 982 millibars, probably a strong Category 1 here as far as what the, the model here is showing on the European as it approaches the coastline. And as it does so, it does begin to weaken just a little bit. It does bottom out at 981, then it comes back up to 983. And this is showing hits pretty close to, to the Naples area, south of Tampa, and there's down to the south, so it uh, or towards Sarasota, I should say. So it's a little bit uh, further to the kind of between, uh, you know, heading down toward the south area uh, near Naples and between Tampa, somewhere in between there. And then it crosses the coast and then it keeps it on trekking off toward the east. So that is the European model. We'll see how that works out. Now, keep in mind, remember what I said, we got these big storms out in the Atlantic. The other thing to watch out for this weekend 
is the East Coast is going to be dealing with some pretty significant waves. Look at these waves here coming in for tomorrow, uh, up and down the entire East Coast. So we're talking anywhere uh, getting upwards of maybe 16 foot waves here uh, coming into the Outer Banks of, of North Carolina and going into the Northeast. So anybody planning on going to the beaches this weekend, uh, you know, still fairly warm here in the East. So just be careful, watch out for the rip currents and the sea conditions are going to be pretty rough here all up and down the Eastern seaboard. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the, the impacts here for as far as our jet stream patterns. We're looking at that river of air that kind of drives the weather from west to east here. And now we're in October. October traditionally is a quiet month. But uh, again, we do have one little cool shot here coming down here as we head toward Tuesday and Wednesday. So here is this coming down here. Again, here's our jet stream. Again, you kind of see it kind of making that little white wavily thing. I will say this much: I will uh, is is uh, the jet stream look is looks like it's heading toward a very active period. And one thing, as I go out here through the ten days, you can see to see these major dips, and that's when you get these storms, these, these storm systems to fire up. And here's a real big one here toward the end here. As uh, another cool shot here comes down here as we head toward the following week, going into the 14th and 15th of the month. So we got two cool shots here. Now I will say this much: boy, if this thing was a little bit further off to the west. With that configuration, then we'd be have to watch for maybe some severe weather. We're not going to get it right now because this is a little bit too far to the east. But if this progressive pattern continues going into the later in the month of October and going into November, we definitely have to watch out for that quote unquote secondary severe weather season uh, as we go further into the future. If this, you know, when I say progressive, it means, you know, highly amplitude uh, jet stream pattern uh, that continues as we go deeper into the month of fall. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the precipitation here as we look at the continent of the United States. We'll go a little bit closer here. Again, we're watching that storm system uh, tracking along the, the northern tier. That's what's going to bring that active weather here uh, throughout the day heading in from Saturday into Sunday. That's what's going to bring that uh, little pocket of severe weather there as that continues to ride here toward the east. Uh, again, we'll be watching our system out here in the Gulf of Mexico as well as we look at through the weekend. So, again, watch that timestamp up right-hand corner as we can see the rain is kind of coming through the northeast going into Monday morning. A little wet there. Uh, there is that cold shot comes on down. This one's not nearly that bad. You see the 540 line, you know, you got some definitely got some cooler temperatures are coming into New England there. And of course, we'll be watching our hurricane uh, getting very close uh, to the, the east of uh, the west coast of Florida going in toward Wednesday morning. That looks like Wednesday morning landfill fall uh, coming in there because that's the 12Z. That's when they, they'll be looking at landfall at that time and it crosses right across Florida. Then it's pretty quiet. I mean, after it goes by, Going into the following weekend, next weekend looks very quiet over almost the entire country. No major storm systems at all. And then we'll wait for that next little system to start to show its ugly head here as we go in toward the tail end of this run. We see some energy here and we're going to see some of this cold air kind of come down here as we see a significant system there. Got a little weak system out here into the inner mountain region, a little upper level disturbance there. But uh, again, we see a significant dip here with a nice little storm system here developing and a nice little cold shot coming here down again through New England and expecting probably the eastern third of the United States here uh, as we go in, say, around the 15th of the month uh, with that. But again, October typically is a quieter month. We've got a couple of systems to watch here, a couple of cooled shots. And of course, we've got our tropical system. We're going to have to watch indeed to see how that's going to work out. Let's look at the rainfall totals here uh, over the next 10 days. Again, this is the European model as we'll be looking at significant rains down there. Uh, we've got that system coming in first, bringing the rains here across portions of New England, obviously. And then, of course, we've got a lot of heavy rain down here uh, towards South Florida as well. So we'll take this all the way out here to the end of its run here so you kind of see where the hot zones are going to be for precipitation is over the next 10 days. And de definitely looking at the northeast and the southeast. So look at here to the northeast. Uh, again, you're looking at some rainfall totals up here, uh, getting into, uh, you know, one uh, maybe up to two, two and a half inches up there from New York State over to Maine, maybe a couple four inches up in there as well uh, as we go through the next 10 days. And then as far as the southeast concer is concerned, Florida, you're looking at some uh, flooding rain conditions down here. I mean, you're still looking at some heavy rains here uh, showing anywhere from, say, three upwards to seven inches of rain here across the Florida peninsula. And a little bit of rain here getting into south Georgia as well. I know they're continuing to clean up there from Helene, but it looks like they're having to deal with a little bit of precipitation there uh, to continue. And then as we did mention, we do have a couple of cool shots coming down. We're going to watch our first one. This one's not nearly as, as robust as it was looking earlier. Uh, that's for sure. You see it kind of coming there into the east as we head toward Monday. See the blue? That's our indications of below normal temperatures. But look at all this heat out in the west. Temperatures running above normal in the west. Uh, that will continue to be the trend here through the next 10 days 
as that cool air kind of settles down across the southeast and in the New England as well uh, for most of next week. So uh, again, looking here toward uh, Thursday, you got a nice little pocket of some cooler air here up and down the eastern seaboard. Of course, we got, we're dealing with rain and clouds down here that should be evacuating from that storm. Very warm out here in the west, a slight little cool down here across the Pacific Northwest, a possibility there as we head toward Thursday, that's October the 10th. And as we go ahead and take this on out, we'll watch that next cool down come out. Whoa, that's, look at that. Wow, that is very warm. Well above normal here on Thursday across the upper plains here, uh, you know, into the south front of North Dakota and into uh, areas of Minnesota. Probably see temperatures in the 80s, which is way above normal, which is getting in October. And uh, temperatures well above normal there. But that's ahead of that next cold front that's going to be diving down here toward the south here. There it is. Boom, going into, two, going into your Monday morning. Nice little cold shot here coming across the Midwest and then across areas of the New England states uh, going into your uh, Tuesday. So that is going to the end of your model run. That'll kind of settle in eventually going into Wednesday. That'll cool things down there across the southeast as well. So that, that don't feel neglected, but still very warm out here in the west uh, for the most part here over the next 10 days. That's how it's looking right now on the European. Got a couple of cool shots here in the east, and but still saying with the above normal temperatures there. Uh, there in the West. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go switch on over to the climate outlook and we'll take a look at this. And you, you're gonna, again to see that trend is kind of holding true. Again, this takes you out October 10th to the 14th. You see the blue up and down the Eastern seaboard. So it's basically that maybe the Eastern quarter of the United States is gonna get those glancing blows. But look how most of the West, especially here across the high plains intermountain, temperatures running well above normal for this time of year. And that trend continues from the 12th to the 18th, near normal here in the east, but well above normal here for basically two thirds of the country as we head through the middle of the month and a little bit past the middle of the month for the month of October. Now, as far as precipitation is concerned, there's big lack thereof. As you just saw there with the model, we weren't seeing anything for days there. Obviously, the areas of Florida and the peninsula got to watch out for the heavy rains there, but uh, most of the country here, the 10th and the 14th looking very dry. Doesn't change much there for the 12th to the 18th as well from coast to coast, dry weather. And again, that's typical in October, we're making that transition. We're in the fall. But again, one thing I'm watching is that very amplified jet stream, which will, which is fair, still fairly far north. It's going to be working its way down further south. And as it does so, if it continues with that highly amplified pattern, then we'll have to watch out for that potential for some more active severe weather, especially going into the month of November. So we got a little ways to kind of watch that. Now, I am planning on doing, once again, some wall-to-wall -wall coverage on our next uh, hurricane. It looks like we're going to have here across the, the areas of Florida uh, going into later this week. So if you'd like to participate, and I always like to invite viewers in to participate, and if you want to get that those live updates, I want to start those probably on Tuesday on every one of the hourlies. We'll probably have an extended coverage there on a Tuesday evening, and then probably get up early Wednesday morning, around 5 o'clock in the morning, and we'll start the coverage and we'll track it all the way up to landfall there of our next storm, which is going to be Milton here uh, hitting on Florida. Let's just hope and pray it doesn't become a big major hurricane and stays on the lower end of that scale. Let's hope the Europeans right into it's, it's a category. Any kind of any kind of hurricane is bad, but we want to keep it weak, right? We don't want to see anything like we saw on the scale with Helene, that's for sure, especially with parts of Florida still playing cleanup. All right. All right. That's your update here for your Saturday morning. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of the broadcast. I do appreciate you guys' support of the channel. All right. That's your morning update. You guys take it easy. Be good. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.